All right, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Teardown. My name is Jeff Gluck, and I am literally along with my coworker, Jordan Bianchi. We are motorsports writers for The Athletic. We are in the same room for the same podcast for the first time since the Daytona 500. Jordan, you couldn't you couldn't get rid of me for that long. We are here at Iowa Speedway, <laughs> back together. We have uh, had a weekend of carpooling, uh, dinners. It, Jordan, are you are you tired of me yet? That's the key question here. I never get tired of you. Why would I ever get tired of you? It's it's been a long weekend, everybody. It's been a long weekend. Lots wow. of uh, that's hurtful. Well, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, we were here at Iowa inaugural race. We had a lot of expectations coming into the race. A lot of talk about tire problems. We had a lot of talk about <laughs> partial repaves. Um, a lot of worries, right? Uh, a lot of, you know, like, uh-oh, what's what's going to be going on here? Uh, as it turned out, not so bad. Actually, pretty good, I would say. <laughs> pretty good. Maybe the best next-gen short track no, race, perhaps? No, second best. Oh, okay. Well, it was Bristol. the best. Well, okay. That's fair. But that was a little bit of a unique circumstance, wouldn't you say? It was still a race. Okay. It was still a race. So anyway, that's where we are. That's where we'll start. Uh, Jordan, Ryan Blaney wins for the first time uh, since Martinsville last fall and uh, back in the playoffs. What would you make of this whole, what did you make of this whole night? It was interesting coming in, you, you know, especially after the events of Friday, you're like, this is untenable. Like these tires are not going to hold. And are we going to have an issue where, the, you know, every 19, 20 laps or so, tires are coming apart, guys are having to pit, and this race is just going to be a debacle, and it's going to be ludicrous to watch happen. And guess what? It wasn't the case. What happened was the drivers and crews adjusted. Thankfully, they had a practice on Friday. Can you imagine this race mm. if we just had – Like the 20-minute thing? The 20-minute thing? No, seriously. Because <laughs> you mean 20 well, that's minutes. why they do it. That's yeah. why they do the 50-minute, right? Yeah, but you go out there for 20 minutes, and you run – I don't know how many laps, but you're probably not doing a whole lot of 20-lap runs – if we didn't have that session on Friday, who knows how this unfolds. But because you did, the crews adjusted uh, very, very well. A lot of camber and air, air, air pressures and stuff. And largely, the tires held up. I mean, yes, we saw we didn't see uh, we saw tires wear down, but that was after 100 lap runs, which is what they're supposed to do. Um, and, and instead, this was a really, really good race. Um, it wasn't a barn burner by any means, but I, I don't know how you couldn't watch this race and be not satisfied. It was, you had a lot of different storylines. We, at no point did we really say, oh man, that damn short track package again. Like, no, they, they, they mm. were making passes. We got saw guys come from the back. We saw guys over long green flag runs, Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, especially, get their cars better over long green flag runs and make moves. Uh, this race was Perfect in a lot of ways. I don't know about perfect. Eh, perfect's probably strong. One. Okay, it was very good. It was uh, it was very good, and especially considering the expectations, right? Because you know, there's a couple elements, right? So let's just start with the repave part of it. You know, we talked about this Frankenstein-ish repave, and then you get here, we're doing the track walk, and <laughs> it's like not only is the repave like uneven in terms of when it where it extends out. You know, the turn two, it goes farther than the other lane. Um, you're like, okay, well, the bottom lane just stops and it keeps just going. Um, and the same, come, I think, coming out three and four. <clears throat> and then, like, we're walking the track and, like, there's a seam in, like, the middle of the repave. Like, mm -hmm. you're like, uh, this looks weird and it's scratched up. And there's, like, some gouges out of here. Like, how is this going to work? And, but the thing was, it, it was wide enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it was wide enough to have, I mean, three wide racing at times. Now that always didn't work out. We'll talk about that in a minute, <laughs> but you could have, it, we saw several moments of three wide where, you know, it wasn't like it, it was a disaster. I mean, they were, they were racing I and mean, it was, there were multiple grooves. They could move around the know. faster cars could pass. Um, I mean, you see when Larson goes from 32nd to fourth or fifth or whatever, mm -hmm. um, after his, you know, untimely, uh, accidental pit, you know, he, he thought he had a tire going down. They said, Oh, you know, or, he said, does it look bad? I said, well, it looks a little bit scuffed. He said, well, I, I don't want to pit, you know, he's leading. And they said, uh, you know, they're trying to make sure, you know, be on the safe side. So I tell him to pit. He comes in and they say, Oh, actually the air was up. There was no problems. 
but you know, when you're trying to warm up the tires, it might've scuffed a little bit because they'd said, did you have contact? I said, no, but you know, so it was, they, he didn't have to do it, but when he did, his race wasn't over. I mean, it was later, but it, he wasn't buried at that moment. He right? could make passes. You could yes, come from the back. From and, and the big thing that jumped out to me and what separated this race from most other next gen car short track races is when we saw the leader get into slower traffic tonight, what were they able to do? Like, yeah, they weren't stuck behind like the no. 30th place car for laps on end. Right. Like they would kind of right. wait until they had an opportunity because that's what you do. You just don't go, but they were able to make moves and get by these guys. And you could see the speed differential between them. And it wasn't, I, I didn't, I listened to a lot of scanner. Did you hear any talk about arrow or dirty air or anything? No, nobody I mean, was like, Oh, you can't pass. This nothing. is ridiculous. I'm stuck here. Oh, I can't do anything, which has been like, let's be honest, the hallmark of next yeah, gen short track was, racing. This was fantastic in, so, in that respect. Yeah. I mean, this was a class. I've watched a lot of races here at Iowa. Mm -hmm. This was a classic Iowa race. Like you saw some long green flag runs where you had guys who really did a good job of maintaining their tires and had better long run cars. And you had guys who short run cars and, and go back and forth. You'd see some stretches of green flag racing. This, this was what Iowa is. This isn't a true like quote unquote short track bull ring, but this is a more of a Richmond esque track. Uh, I don't know how you can't watch this race. And I don't know what people's expectations were, but I would widely guess that every box was checked. Look, I mean, again, considering what the fears were anytime you hear the word repave. And again, it wasn't full repave. It was partial repave, but it was enough of a repave that you thought they were going to be, you know, down. Everybody's going to be fighting for this bottom groove and you weren't going to be able to pass. Passing's going to be so difficult. Um, that didn't really come to fruition. So in that sense, it was really good. Um, I just think, you know, it was entertaining enough, but it, it wasn't the classic Iowa short track race and that you could, you know, obviously half the track was still unusable. You couldn't run all the way up to the wall. Right. So, you know, Chase Briscoe had a great line this weekend. He said, you know, cause he said, this is my favorite track. And he said, but it's like seeing an ex-girlfriend again after 10 years, you know, you have certain memories and you see her again and it's just not as cool. Like things have changed a little bit. It's, it's not as fun anymore. Um, but it's still the same, same person. Right. So, um, it's just a little bit different. Your, your memories are different than it was. You, why, why are you, uh, cause I'm just thinking of all the I'm number of ex-girlfriends I have that were listening to the show. Oh, and so you're refraining from comment. Yeah. You have ex-girlfriends listen to the show. Anyway, keep, keep going. What? How, keep going. You're how do you know me. this? Because they let me know. They say, hey, Jordan, remember me? I, I'm listening to the forward. show. Let's just move forward, please. You're the one that brought I it know, up. I, I know you, my, my face gave it away. Anyway, <laughs> great point about what was Chase Briscoe going, please? <laughs> Can oh, we cut this out? I really think that this should be... All right, we'll move on. Cut this out. Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> that was a revealing. Interesting. You don't have fr you don't have old friends listening to this. Old friends. That's a different uh, <laughs> way. To, that's a different term. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 a, it's a different Iowa, but obviously yeah. it, it's still uh, still uh, oldie but a goodie, I guess. So it still has its characteristics of Iowa too. And, and I am I'm really really blown away that the tires weren't an issue, and then all of okay, the let's talk about that next. And, let's yeah, talk about yeah, that and, next. I, and but also we like all of the issues we had about the track, and like oh my mm -hmm. goodness, this what do they do this place? That you know, quoting the Godfather, they massacred my boy, you know that kind of thing. Like it wasn't there. Like it was not what we thought it was going to be, but it wasn't. It wasn't this horrible thing, and we got an entertaining race out of it. Yeah. So the tires, right? Practice, fifty minute practice, five cars have are blowing tires uh oh two of them pounded the wall yeah and it looked bad you know you're like uh oh and then um you know they say oh well, what happened here how could this happen because they just had a test in late may and they were on this tire same tire that they used but they were making like 50 rap 50 lap runs no problem and the tires weren't even lasting 20 laps on friday so it's like what gives well Goodyear says, here's the problem. They're running a second faster than when they were here for the test, uh, a, a second per lap. How could that happen? Well, again, according to Goodyear, sometimes with these repaves, the way it was explained to me, so they put this asphalt down, right? 
and there's like these oils in the asphalt in the new asphalt and as the cars are going over it the oils are coming up and you know it's it's slowing down the track a little bit right when so when they were here for the test it's probably slowing things down well as eventually the oil is all gone out of there and it's just the asphalt left and that's just straight grip right so they get here and now you have you know 40 cars whatever running out and xfinity cars running out on there and you know it's it's any whatever oil was going to be there is not there anymore i guess is again i'm not an asphalt scientist but this is what that was explained to me so i'm trying to explain to you so now it's just straight grip so now they're going faster well goodyear also provides a curve and it's basically like they, they try to tell teams and form the teams okay here's camber here's air pressure you know here's what we recommend you doing with your settings on both these things right like you know as you go up here do this you know x y axis axis whatever um so their curve was off because they didn't expect the high speeds that we saw so they went around the garage the next day and they tried to tell every team they could like hey we've redid our calculations we think this is the curve you should be looking at obviously the more conservative you go on your camber and your air pressures the slower you go so nobody wants to do that much but obviously we we saw it tonight the teams made it absolutely work they figured it out now there was you know our friend caleb vestal documented seven tire problems during the race so there was still some tire problems but it wasn't like this was happening after 20 laps this was i mean there was a hundred lap yeah, run. Yeah, Goodyear said point. about 110 laps was about when you saw some of the issues start to materialize a little bit, which is that's fine. Which is what you want over yeah. a tire. You you could even maybe say maybe a little bit before that even, but that's that's kind of the window of what you want. And ultimately, the race winning driver, which we'll talk about in a minute, uh, but his crew chief makes a two tire pit call. So Jonathan Hassler said that Ryan Blaney's uh, left side tires in the end had over 130 laps on them. Um, and that worked. That was the winning call to take two tires in that situation. Um, so those, the left sides weren't wearing as much and, uh, they were starting to wear toward the end. Blaine, he said he was really starting to struggle with them. He was even, he was trying to save them a little bit when he could get in traffic. That's why you'd see Byron close up a little bit at times. But, um, then when he had to go at the end, he was like, Ooh, these are kind of wearing out a little bit. Um, but it worked, it worked. Right. So I think you had sort of like a good balance of the tire wear, right? They weren't rock hard. They mattered. It seemed like they made a difference, um, but they also weren't popping and blowing out like we were worried. And I mean, if it was going to be every 20 laps or something, yikes, but that everybody made the adjustment. Goodyear made the adjustment. So it seems like that, that storyline largely wasn't an issue. I mean, obviously it was in the sense that, you know, there was, there was cars hitting the wall and there was one, controversial caution again we'll get to that but yeah i mean again considering the two worries going into the race the repave a lack of passing the tires popping um pretty good i think it turned out pretty good i have no complaints i have none whatsoever i thought again man how lucky are we to have that practice on friday because without that you don't know how this race unfolds and then all of a sudden a race that had a lot of enthusiasm, a market that really has done a good job of embracing this, this could have been marred. This could have gone the other direction, and you leave here and you go, oh, what was this? Why, why, why did we do this? You could, I don't want to say it's a Kentucky 2011 situation again, but when you have a new event and it's not what the expectations are, um, it's hard to recover from that. But instead, you gave the people a very entertaining race, you delivered, and you leave here going, you know what? This was great. And you talk to drivers after the race, and I don't know what you talked to, but everyone I talked to said the same thing, which was, this was great. Can't wait to come back. We want to be back here again for a long time. Now, some drivers after the race did say, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't mind if they just finished repaving the corners. Yes, they did say that. <laughs> they did. And, I mean, do we know? I, I haven't heard whether NASCAR intends to or not. I Yes. Uh, so Jerry Caproth, who I interviewed for, the uh, story I did on The Athletic last week about why NASCAR did this in the first place, why you know they didn't have time to repave the whole thing. It was late in the year, late in the spring, when they uh, finally got to do it, and they had to be done before May, so there just wasn't enough time, ultimately. Um, I'd said, so what's, are you just going to finish it after this in time for next year? And he said, it's honestly going to be a wait and see. 
We're going to see how this race goes. This is before the race, obviously. We're going to see how this race goes and we'll reevaluate it and see what we need to do, you know, but I mean, honestly, like I, I could see the case for, uh, you, you know, first of all, it looks kind of bad, but aside from looking bad, um, looks aren't everything, Jeff. Oh, okay. Wisdom from Jordan Bianchi. Getting some <laughs> more here. Um, I thought it raced fine. So I'm kind of almost hesitant to be like, well, like finish it off, do the rest of the corners <laughs> because I know there's, there's always, uh, unintended consequences. <laughs> it seems like in NASCAR. And if this race was just fine just now, um, I don't know. I think it actually even made the setups a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. And when you have the setups that are tough to nail exactly, Maybe that even makes for a better race because it's unpredictable, comers and goers, all that kind of stuff. So I guess I would have a vote for, I don't know, maybe, maybe don't touch <laughs> it. Just leave it kind of looking weird. Uh, people always talk about they like character. I mean, that's... that's It's got uniqueness. It's a generous term, you know, to loop, lump but that into character. Bartzell's got like kind of this weird sometimes, you know, don't they have like concrete in the corners? Yeah, but I mean, it's even though. The yeah, lanes are the same. This, he has, this but, has I mean, that's, lanes. But if you want to make it challenging and different, like you said, like leave it. I, and I don't really have an opinion either way. Like I have, I've heard drivers some say, like if you pave it up top and finish it off, that's obviously going to be grippier. But then you're also going to have the bottom where it's going to be a little aged, but there might be speed down there too, especially if you're going through traffic because there might be clean air, that kind of thing. And you can kind of maybe have different lanes and depending on what your car is set up, you give alternatives. So it's almost... It makes sense to me. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, honestly, it sounds silly, but I just kind of trust the experts on this one. Like, I can yeah. make, I, I see both sides of it. Yeah. I mean, again, like, I think if this had been the one groove disaster yeah. race or something, then you have a lot more. You'd be like, oh, this is, bring know, in do the, this, do this. We're going to pave it right now. Um, you know, I, I would like to say, uh, you know, NASCAR did catch a lot of, crap for this so it's probably worth noting that it was fine they, they did a fine job it was a good job right like i mean kevin harvick on his podcast said this was the biggest f up of the year and it was the biggest mistake all all season or whatever right so um but it wasn't yeah so i'm just i'm saying like we it was a lot of people have jumped to conclusions on this that maybe we should have well i mean it's it is kind of a theme, I will say, like the North Wilkesboro repave. It was going to be like, oh, this is bad. This is bad. And then they were running all the way to the wall. Yep. And people were like, this is the best repave ever. So it does seem often that a lot of times when you think a race is going to turn out a certain way, even all the drivers, crew chiefs, whatever, they're like, yeah, it's going to be this. It's going to be this. I don't see how it's not going to be this. I mean, everybody gets so surprised by these things. I mean, you could even look at, I mean, I'm just trying to think of examples off the top of my head. Chicago street race last year. This is going to, you can't be able to pass too tight, too narrow. Yeah. And then it was file. like, wow, this it's is going to be a crash fest, <laughs> right? This is like surprisingly a great road. Yeah. Maybe the best road course race in the next drivers are like, Hey man, we can go two wide and three wide at some places maybe. So yeah, it's, it's weird how like you just really don't know. And of course it's our job to be like, how's this going to race? What do you think it's going to, what do you think it's going to be like? And we're trying to get all the quotes, but I mean, I think it was Kevin Harvick at one of these last year, one of these going into it. And he's like, look, you just really don't know until we get out there until we're actually racing because, and I think that's, that's true. I mean, we can all guess they can guess. Um, you can say, I don't know. It's, it doesn't seem like it's going to be good. There, the circumstances aren't lining up for this one, but, uh, the conventional wisdom always seems to be kind of proven wrong at times. So it's almost the opposite of what everybody thinks which is weird, but, um, yeah, there's another example tonight. We don't know. Sometimes we just don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> um, so yes, the, the race itself, obviously, um, Ryan Blaney, a couple weeks ago, uh, he had one taken away by the racing gods. That was not a racing God thing. That was a team. The team? What well, you're talking about gateway, like the, how the team caught, I mean, that was a team. That was a mistake. They messed up. It wasn't a racing God. No, thing. the racing gods came down and they evaporated his fuel and they said, you will not win. We're going to give this to Austin yeah, Sindrick. It's very kind of you to say it that way. <laughs> okay. Well, 
he had one taken away from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine tonight the right the, the tire call? Goes, you know, they take two tires and it backfires and then a possible win like goes at the end his tires were yeah, out. Like he wears out and gets passed. Man. Woo. Yeah, but still, I mean that you know, you had to he was trying to do that to get the track position in the first place by taking two. But I know, it's just um but so he gets one back. He gets one back tonight because he was not the fastest car. Kyle Larson was gonna win this race. Kyle Larson had as Cliff Daniels said on the radio at one point, the you know, uh, the fastest car by a ridiculous amount. But he had a topsy turvy night because first he has that aforementioned false alarm with the tire, makes him pit from the lead, comes out thirty second, drives back up to fifth. He's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Then um, you know, he's he, yeah, it's a restart basically, mm -hmm. right? And he sticks it three wide, which I'll be honest. I don't think that was that bad of a move. I Not mean, here. There was three wide throughout the night. Uh, you can easily go three wide in the front stretch. Like it's not, it's a, there, there are parts of this track where three wide is not a problem at all. But it seemed like on X people were blaming him and the TV broadcast kind of blamed him. Suarez's radio, team radio obviously blamed Larson. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what happens when you go three wide kind of thing. But to me, it was like, I don't know. First of all, that's, a very Larson thing to do. Like he, and again, it works out a lot of times. We've talked about this recently where a lot of his moves happen to work out. Um, sometimes they don't, but he can sort of make some moves that others may not be able to get away with this one. It looked like he was going to be fine. Suarez to me got loose, come up the track and hit him. But Suarez to our friend, Bob Pockris video after the race, he says, well, you know, the six was a little bit off the wall. Um, and then he was kind of pinching the five down and the five was kind of pinching me down and I thought there was going to be more room and I just kind of ran into them. Nah, eh, I don't know about that <laughs> one. I don't know. What do you think? I don't have a problem with Larson's move. I mean, it's on a restart. You need to be aggressive. We, we know this because this is the best opportunity to, to pass cars and, and get track position and everything. I can see where you would say, listen, you have a really fast race car. You just came from 32nd to the top 10 in about 30 laps this we still got a long way to go like you 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 can almost say like be patient a little bit here yeah it's the inclination is be aggressive get those spots and then just start picking them off but i would also say like if you have that fast for race car that you know is going to run well in traffic because you just went through it like maybe you don't do that and i don't i don't have a problem with the move because there you can do that here like it is plenty of room to do that and i put the blame on suarez but you could you could say like maybe that was a miscalculation by Larson to say ah you know in that moment you don't really need to be if this would have been fifty laps to go then you're like yeah you were going forward here if this had been later in the race sure at that moment though with as fast a race car as you have maybe a smidge more patience would allowed you to to continue to move forward and maybe you sacrifice a spot or two there but you at least make it to the finish and give yourself a fighting chance. And we saw the 24 who was not anywhere in the class of the five um, was in the mix. You would think that there was going to be ample time for the five to still get back up there. Yeah. Larson, we talked to him after the race. He says, look, I mean, yeah, I guess it, I could go into that corner sixth and sixth is better than wrecked. Right. And he said, I, I maybe I should have been more aware of who I was racing around, around I believe his, was his comment. <laughs> but at the same time, and you're saying, well, you know, you know, you have that good of a car because you just came all the way up from 32nd. How do you think he got up from 32nd? He was making moves like that. He was sweeping past everybody. He was so much faster but that you, he could get away with that. You, re so. you got your track position back at that point, essentially. Like you're you're running in the top 10. You, I get it. In hindsight. Back, I get what you're saying, but yeah. I mean, it's it's. But that also is what makes Larson really good. Like those are the moves he makes, and so you don't want to take that away because that is a skill. In, that he, you know, tool in his toolbox that he uses. So, I mean, this is what Larson moves, and I think nine times out of ten, it's not a problem. So, I, I would much rather have a driver continue to make those moves who pulls them off on the regular than the other and who's too conservative and ends up losing a bunch of positions. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I just have to put this one on on Suarez. Oh, no, no, yeah, don't get me wrong. No, 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 no. This is not Larson's fault. Like this is. This well, is, I'm telling you that the broadcast and X seemed to say, well, you know, maybe he, well, he shouldn't have done that. But uh, I mean, uh, Larson, I mean, Suarez caused the accident because he moved up. Like, that's clear as day. Like, that's that's on him. I just Whoa, moved the you table. just moved the whole Sorry. table. 
Very, you were demonst table. being demonstrative there with your moving up, and then you moved up the whole table. <laughs> so I just pulled the Suarez. There you go. Yeah. You <laughs> thought you had more room, and I'm you I'm going to blame you. You came my way. No, I've just been sitting here. Yeah. You moved the table into me. Well, we'll look at the video. All right. Well, yeah, that's it's being documented right here on YouTube. <laughs> um, so anyway, he loses the regular season points lead after he had just gotten it back um, at Sonoma. So now Chase Elliott is the points leader. Yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, Chase is having a terrific year. Leads the series in average finish. The one thing he hasn't done is he doesn't have the same volume of wins as a Larson and Hamlin and Elliott only got the war, excuse me, uh, Byron. But he, if you look at his numbers, like it's really, really impressive. And we had the conversation, maybe it was after he won at Texas. It was right around there about, you know, who we consider like our favorite or four, our four, our final four favorites. And I think we each had kind of Elliott kind of in that four spot tentatively or kind of like, I don't think there's any doubt right now. Like mm. they, they look really, really good. What they're not doing again, they're not leading a ton of laps. They're not winning stages. You would like to see an improvement in that, mm -hmm. but they are finishing races and they're in the mix. Um, and it feels like they're just like right there where if they can just find that extra little bit, they're going to be really, really dangerous. And them running off for two, three victories in a, you know, short race stretch is very much on the table. They are very much players in this championship. Yeah, you know, I think the last time we talked about this, we were kind of taking it for granted that Truex was in our Final Four. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Byron. Mm -hmm. um, Byron has really struggled um, up and up yeah. and down. Um, you know, Truex obviously had a lot of bad luck. Um, and at the time we were talking about this, we weren't even giving a sniff to the Fords at all. Right. That wasn't even a thought because they started so bad with their new car and we're like, oh, oof, it's going to be a long season for Ford. They've made a lot of gains lately. Um, you know, for me, I would still have obviously Larson. I'd still have Hamlin in there, uh, as you mentioned, Chase. So now I'm not as sure, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to just be like out on a Byron or a Truex, mm -hmm. but also I haven't seen like a ton to, that's super compelling about them. Um, Reddick, you know, he had some good moments for a while, but I, I, you know, they, we haven't heard as much from him. So, you know, the, the thing is like, is Ford is, you know, are, are they going to be able to, you know, put a driver, mm -hmm. you know, have a strong enough run in the final four? Like, would you put a Blaney at this point? Blaney now has been mm -hmm. one of the two fastest cars at both gateway mm -hmm. and here, which yeah. are phoenix ish and martinsville ish right? so you know it, depending if they have a good run in new hampshire next week you know would would you would you consider i mean it's i know he's mm -hmm. way off the radar but we're seeing some speed out of those guys but if he goes out back even further too go back to darlington running really well in that race had speed there got caught up in a wreck not of his own doing um charlotte had speed there got caught up in a wreck this team really seems overall to really be on the upswing and doing the things that we expect out of them. They they finished it off tonight, which was big, and get themselves in the playoffs. They they are certainly a team, and we, we saw this a year ago, we've seen this before from the, the Penske camp, that come the playoffs, they have the opportunity to heat up and, and go on these big runs. And you look at the tracks that are in the playoffs, those are among Blaney's best. And I think that is that's something that just can't be understated enough. I, you have to consider that, and I think we we tend to overlook Brad Keselowski quite a bit. Um, you know, Brad wasn't much of a factor at all tonight, but overall, like certainly that team is, is consistency wise has largely been there as well. I don't think you can really definitively comfortably put. You know, you mentioned Hamlin, you mentioned Larson, you mentioned Elliott. I think those are the three. They're like in that top tier, right? And then there's a gap. And there's a bunch of other guys who are kind of in that mix, and you could make a case for a handful of those guys. There's no one that you could definitively, comfortably say, "Hey, man, I really feel good about this." You can. It's a lot of ifs. It's a whole lot of ifs right now. Yeah, but on DBC after Gateway, when I had said, "Well, I mean, this, you know, Blaney running so well, at Gateway could mean, you know," they were like, "No." I think it was Freddie. Was it you, Freddie? <laughs> you have something to answer for because I'm seeing some good speed right here. So, so if you don't think. He's a possible Final Four contender. I want to hear who theirs are because uh, I, I feel like we're, you know, all we need, we've, we've seen it. All you got to do is get hot. You got to be going at the right time. So 
you know, is it possible? I'd like to, I'd like to know. I'd like to find out. Yeah. But like we, and again, I, and I say this over and over again, we have seen this out of the Penske guys the last few years where they, they do a really good job of making improvements with their cars and they're, maybe they've made it, maybe, they, maybe they're peaking too soon. Yeah. <laughs> like, sooner than last year. Yeah. But the point is like, they've done a really good job of getting better and better. And we've had that conversation the last couple of years. Oh my goodness. This is so bad. What is going on? They're never going to win. And they figured it out, and they they got a smart bunch over there. And I, I don't know what they found. You know, there was a lot of conversation a few weeks ago, like, "Hey, this is motors at this," but whatever it is, it's working. And and it's not just by the way, it's not just Penske. Like we saw Josh Berry tonight, and mm. we've seen the Stuart yeah. Haas racing yeah. cars yeah. run much better. Um, we've seen the RFK cars run much better. It's so it's it just seems like Ford as a whole is kind of rising. Man, that would have been a big <laughs> moment for Josh Berry. I was so ready to write that upset. story. Oh, I bet. That would I was so right that story. I was like, man. Rodney Childers going all in, this right, like on yo, Josh Berry and oh, being like, I'm, this I'm is gonna, my guy. Yeah, I'm going where he goes kind of thing. We're a package deal, right? We're fighting for our jobs. Right, right. We're going to get that win. We're going to. Right. We, we just showed everybody, come hire us. This is why. Oh, my gosh. That Cinderella been story. Such a good story. Short track. And Out of two nowhere. Two short track guys who's fighting for their careers. Yeah, you could have written the crap out of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would have been fun. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Um, well, I mean, but it was no, just, but I mean, they're great. But they uh, just another good run though. And this team, it's really bump. It's it's disappointing that what's happening to Stuart Haas Racing because Barry is doing what you want to see out of a rookie, which is getting better yeah. as the year goes along. And we have seen these races this year, whether it was Bristol or Richmond, races where tires were a factor, especially you know early at Richmond, where tire saving matters. Like Barry is so good at this, and this is another example tonight. And I was thinking about it, and I'm like. Oh man! Well, there's Richmond later in the year, you know, during the regular season. It's unfortunate you're not going to really see one of those tracks the rest of the way because these guys are good. These guys are good in these races, and they manage them so well. But man, that would have been a great, great story. I mean, let's be honest. Don't completely count out Josh Berry at Richmond or at, at New, New Hampshire, Hampshire next yeah, week, yeah. right? That's what I mean. I mean. I mean, Rodney Childers has gotten Harvick pretty fast there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a Remember Eric Almirola a few years ago too. Yeah, at SHR camp. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, and just... Chase Briscoe, by the way, tonight he was he was running top five, and then he had a bad pit stop which put him back. Then his night kind of spiraled. It got worse though, Jordan, when Chase Briscoe was one of these cars trapped a lap down by a very untimely caution. Mm -hmm. So this was a very interesting moment. Now we talked about strategy last week on this show, and this was a very good. This is an indica This is an example of that strategy. Yes. Well, first of all, before we talk about the strategy, let's talk about the caution. So, you know, you'd seen an earlier caution when Noah Gregson gets like half spun, saves it, caution, right? Mm -hmm. Then we saw, I believe it was like McDowell. He hit the wall. He was slowing. He kind of limped to pit road. No caution. Yep. Somebody else, Eric, maybe Eric Jones. Eric Jones had the tire go down on the back stretch, was limping around, and then like had to swerve across traffic to get to pit road, which was like sketchier than hell. And then uh, Dammer, Daniel, Daniel Hemmerich had the – I don't even know what that was. But well, the, that, that's yeah, what I'm talking yeah. about. So Daniel Hemmerich hits the wall, right? So I had tried to check with NASCAR. It sounds like from their perspective it was a matter of – you know, Hemrick being in the wall and kind of riding it for a minute. And just when they called the caution, he kind of came off the wall. You know, I think maybe I don't, I'm not putting words in their mouth to me. It was like, maybe that's one of the ones they would like to have back because that was in the middle of the pit cycle. And we've heard them say repeat like the Atlanta, the Atlanta situation, right? We're going to not, we're going to try not to call cautions if it's in the middle of the pit cycle, because we know, that could trap cars lap down and all this stuff, right? So, but it happens. The caution happens, right? I mean, do you want to say anything about the caution first I mean, of all, the consistency? It's or just anything? it happens. Mean, it's it's you know, I get whatever. It was borderline in every in every in every sport. Actually, it wasn't borderline. It was it was it, it was official, a miscall, officials yeah. miscalls. Yeah. Like it's just every sport it happened. I think it's fair to say it's a miscall. It happens. Like you move on. I think you go back and look at the tape. Ah, we had that one back. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I I I think that they. Had they had that one over to do yeah, over again, they they don't do that. Again, I, just, we're on a short track. It wasn't egregious because, you know, I, I it wasn't like we. There's been some that are worse, but you know, I was like, oof, I don't know. 
especially because they hadn't called, you know, yeah. you'd seen some other flat tires they hadn't. And you heard Adam Stevens express his frustration on the radio they played on TV. I, so uh, yeah, I will say, like, you go back to Bristol, like, they have been more willing to let things go than not. And mm -hmm. so, like, before, we've always, there's been a tendency to say NASCAR's really quick to hit that button. Like, anytime they get a caution, we get a caution. I don't think that's the case really anymore. It feels like they're often. No, no I, it feels like they're more inclination is let that go. And I think McDowell. That's did. why I think this one was weird. Yeah. I, and I, yeah. I think it's just a missed. I think it's just, it, yeah. it happens. I don't know. It's not a crit. It's not a criticism. It's just everybody makes mistakes. So as a result though, you know, it's looked like, okay, like Chase Briscoe is one of the ones he's, you know, there's a bunch of people are going to take a wave around cause they just got trapped a lap down from pitting. But if one car stays out, then nobody gets to take that <laughs> wave around, Jordan. Yep. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Mike Kelly said, mm -hmm. you know what? Let's do this. So I talked to Mike Kelly, chatted briefly after the race. Why? What was the strategy there? Like, what, you know, he talked about at Texas that had kind of happened to them earlier this year. And uh, he said, you know, they talked about it as a team. And he said, if this comes up again, this might be a strategy to use. And honestly, pretty good one, in my opinion, because... He's like, listen, there's these, this field is so even now. We've all seen this, right? It is so even. If you could trap half of your, half of your competitors a lap down, even though he, you know, Mike Kelly said, I'm going to have to give up track position later because I'm keeping Stenhouse out on 103 lap tires mm -hmm. or whatever. And so, you know, he's going to have to pay, you know, lose. And he ends up coming back. What he finished fourth? Finished fifth. fifth. Okay. So he ends up, you know, getting it back, but. You know, he ha he was like, why not take the chance to trap him a lot down? They said their war room back at the shop was, you know, on the strategy for this. Um, I thought it was fascinating. I asked Rodney Childers afterward, you know, I don't think they were affected by it, but I was just curious, like, what does the garage think when, like, is that fair game? And he's like, yeah, I mean, everybody's running their own race. You got to do what you got to do. Um, so, you know, I'm sure some guys were, not thrilled, maybe, because But that's like, part of it, man. though. I mean, it's not, it sucks, but it's really smart of Mike Kelly and that team to recognize an area that they can take advantage of in a good way. And, and again, that's part of this. This is what this is, and this goes back to the conversation we had, Lee, where, where in a time where you've got more depth in your field than ever before, where it's harder to pass and all of these things, you need to find every little thing that you can to, in your favor and take advantage of it and exploit it. Good for them. Good for them for spotting that and doing it. And it worked perfectly for them. And they got a top five tonight. I think that's their first top five finish of the year, too. You know, this was a – we talked about it. This was a place where Stenhouse, yeah. um, you know, he won three Xfinity races in a row yeah. back in the day. And it was like, you know, could he have some success? But it's weird because I think Dustin Albino pointed out in the post-race news conference that, like, four of the top five uh, finishers had won multiple – um, Iowa races in lower series, yeah. I believe. And so he was asking Blaney, like, is that a coincidence? I mean, it doesn't seem like one. And Blaney was like, honestly, it is like, this track is so different now. He's like, I, I really don't think you can take anything from it. So I, it is kind of an odd thing, right? Because you're like, well, there's all these people with this Iowa experience. Yeah. I mean, but it's, I think it's more of a coincidence in the sense that though, like Blaney's a defending cup champion, Elliot's chase Elliot, William Byron is, William Byron. Yeah, so people that won multiple races. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. Christopher Bell's on that list, too. It's like, these are four of the guys, if you're going to start ranking the best drivers in Cup, yeah. they're going to be damn near close to the top. So, like, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's more of a coincidence. I think these are just really good. And I think this is a driver's track, though. And I think you go in the low, lower series, and this track, before the, the, the repave, was about tire wear, managing tires and long green flag runs and allows the drivers to really showcase their ability well. So drivers who typically run well here um, are going to have a, a high level of skill, which means then they're going to be probably more apt to get promoted to, you know, up the series. Well, some people benefited from the weird timing of that caution, yeah. such as Denny Hamlin, Bubba Wallace, mm -hmm. right? Denny Hamlin suddenly, you know, he was 30th, you know, a decent portion of the race it was like what is going on yeah. with this team we're expecting them down within 30 laps or yeah. so every week we think they're going to be one of the cars to beat and it was so bizarre right um so then it looks like they've kind of turned their they've they've kind of flipped it right <laughs> based on the timing only for hamlin to get caught up in the larson suarez wreck yeah. 
Um, you talked to Hamlin afterward. Yeah, what he, what did you learn? About I will that? say like you made the comment like maybe they this was on the upswing. He said our car wasn't going to do that. Like we just weren't we weren't good enough. We yeah we had track position at that moment, but we weren't going to be able to hang on to it. So oh, so they would have fallen back. Yeah, like it just wasn't pretty decent yeah, anyway. It just wasn't their night. They just did not have it tonight. Well, not to win, but no, but I mean, even to, even to like maintain track, he was not confident that they'd oh, be able to maintain wow. track position. So pretty shocking. Yeah, actually, I mean, Truex was a non-factor. The Toyotas uh, in general tonight, with the exception of Bell, who Bell came on Bell, late. Bell, Bell drove up late, late, yep, late. Yep, yep. But for the most part tonight, but Bell was kind of eh, Reddick you know, and Bubba were nowhere to be seen. Non-factors really like Toyota. Really tonight was just quiet, really quiet night. Yeah, yeah. That was really weird. surprising because uh, you know we know how strong like Hamlin and Truex are are at Richmond, which is like the track that gets compared to a lot here. Um, non-factor like just quiet nights which is really surprising this was a hendrick and penske dominated night speaking of hamlin sounds like mostly the hamlin larson contact yeah. was uh, a non-issue larson said afterwards i mean larson was at the time really fired up on the radio like what understand that so i'd be angry yeah too. and then cliff daniels had this great moment where he's like we're not going to worry about that you know we're going to focus forward yeah i don't understand it i don't know why he did that but we're not, we have, you know, again, the a ridiculously fast car and we're just going to forget about it. And Larson was like, okay, he didn't argue about it. He was just like, all right. And afterwards, you know, Larson was asked about it and he was like, yeah, I don't know. I, he just hit me from behind, got a little loose. Obviously it didn't wreck him, but yeah. it got him bumped out of the way. Um, and then you talked to Hammond, what Hammond, Hammond said about said, that. My fault. Got into him. Didn't mean to at all. Just overdrove it. Got into him. Non-issue. There wasn't any like retribution or you know, some other interesting thing. Um, speaking of Cliff Daniels, if the screw chief thing ever doesn't work out for him, the dude should just be a motivational speaker, <laughs> like go to, to like different corporations and just like fire people up. He could still do that while being a crew chief, you know, could, you could hire him for your next event. Yeah, there you go. But it sounds like being a motivational speaker would be a lot easier than having to crew chief and the grind that goes. You do both. That. You make your name by being a crew chief and then you go to these people, you know, fire him up. Yeah, there you go. Motivational Cliff. <laughs> motivational Cliff. <laughs> What he is? I'm not just like I try that thing. Can't think of a better nickname than that. I, well, I'm not saying that's like that would be his speaker name. I'm just saying he turns on the motivational mode. Yeah. Well, he kind of already is by, by default, I guess. But I mean, <clears throat> if you are having a bad day, call motivational Cliff. Yeah. Actually, he should go on cameo. Oh, there you go. Go go on cameo, and be like, hey, you know, my friend's going through a divorce. Hard time for him. Can you give him a motivational message? And what Cliff I need you to like, do, like, listen, what I need you to do, I need you to focus forward. What happened is in the past, and we can't do anything to change that. But we're going to look forward. We're going to forget about the past, and things are going to get better for us. We're going to put our head down. We're going to work hard. We're going to be our best selves. And at the end of the day, where we, whatever happens, happens. But we know we gave it our best. That's right. I mean, you, then you get back out in the dating yeah. world, you know? That's it. Yeah. And then he's like, here, up. let me show you Bumble. And like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> sure. And then like if somebody's going through a cancer battle or something, he's like, we're going to beat cancer. We're going to throttle it together. You know? We are in this together. We are going to fight. We are a team and you are going to lead the charge because you are you and we believe in you. And without you, we're nothing. Let's go kick its ass. Exactly. Man. Cliff, Ooh. call us, man. <laughs> can be your agent. We, we can really help you get a side business here. I mean, not that you're underpaid by any means. I just want 5%. Five percent of the cameos. <laughs> How much is cameo already taking? I mean, <laughs> he's gonna have to charge a lot for that. But anyway, it's just something to think about, Cliff. You're bored. Um, <laughs> what? It is something no, to think good. about. Something to consider. I mean, it's a gift. That's a gift. No, I mean, I, mean, he, I will. Know. It's a, It's he is very much one of the best p leaders. Like, yeah. and, I, and I mean that, a leader of men in the garage. I mean, there's a lot of different fast things that go into making a great crew chief and one of the things he does exceptionally well, he does a lot of great things but leading and in rallying the team and setting the tone for that team is is among the very best yep well we mentioned martin truex jr some news came out <coughs> thanks to this guy uh he ruined his announcement no i'm just kidding uh, he said it was all over the internet this week so i don't even know why i'm here aka jordan bianchi Dropped a Bianchi bomb about Martin Truex Jr. retiring at the end of the year. We're not really retiring. Retiring clearly from full-time racing. Full-time, which seems was like 
Yeah. Yeah. He seems to want to do more. He yeah. doesn't want to be too bored. That was interesting. He doesn't want to fish seven days a week for 12 months a year, just like <laughs> six days a week with, you know, sometimes coming back to race. That was the interesting yeah. thing though, because he was very adamant. Like I think one of the first things he said is I'm retiring from full-time racing, but they always say that. And then a lot of times um, they, you know, no, I mean like Harvick said he was going to go race late models and stuff, but yeah. he said he was done with full time. He said he was done with the cup. Uh, this was very much, but he, he got asked about Daytona 500. He even mentioned on his own, maybe going to run an Xfinity series race. Mm -hmm. Like all of the signs pointed like Martin being around, in some limited capacity, which we thought we would never see him again. Yeah, right? like I thought he'd yeah. just be do a Carl Edwards, like you know, whoosh, gone. Um, but it certainly seems like he could run a race or two, a, you know, like like or Cup or. Well, he said on the pre-race show, mm -hmm. the uh, USA Network pre-race show today, that he would possibly run up to ten races. Oh, did he? I didn't hear. Yes, that. he did. So there, yeah. So that makes sense. Like, mm -hmm. and there's opportunities there, um, whether it's with Joe Gibbs or you know, twenty three eleven, Denny Hamlin. Said all Martin has to do is tell him, and he'll have a car ready for him. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, incredibly underrated driver. Like you wrote about it this week and about the his career, and it's kind of weird. It's you know usually most drivers start off really at a high, and then it kind of teeters off. Like this was a driver who's look at his success up until you know came in the series in 2006, and so 2006 to, to 2013, he's got two wins, and then you know the events happen at Michael Walter Racing and links up with Furniture Row and, and Cole Pern and just. It's incredible. Like, and you look at his numbers and the near championships with three second place finishes in the championships. Um, 2016, he had the dominant year and probably should have won the championship then and, and didn't. Um, just great, great driver that if his career should have played out the way it should have, would have been even better. And it would have certainly been much higher up in a lot of statistical categories and probably in a lot of those rankings that we like to do. And it's really interesting, too, because, you know, obviously all the drivers got asked about Truex this week, right? And you can hear, like, the admiration they have for his talent level, whether it's Kyle Busch talking about it or Denny Hamlin talking about it. Um, just talent-wise, he was really underrated. You know, just his ability, even from the start. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think it, it does get overlooked because of the, the way his career started, that first half of his career. Like, ah, maybe this guy's not that good. Oh, maybe he just got in a really good car, but no, I mean, the, the, if you listen to the drivers, it's like, no, this guy is elite, elite. And, and they especially say what's amazing about him. I think Kyle Busch said this effectively, but I don't want to, I don't have the exact quote, but basically like he didn't have to work that hard at doing it. Like he's just naturally talented. Like if he, had, I think the inference there is like, if he put even more work in, maybe he could have been even better essentially. Like he didn't have to like, and Denny Hamlin talking about, he had to work so, so, so hard just to be at like Martin's default sort of level. Like he had to put in that mm -hmm. much work to do it. So Martin was able to just show up and in a lot of times be naturally gifted and be fast. And that's why I think sort of these later years, he, they didn't ask that much of him. Like he didn't have to come do a lot of sim. He was able to get away he was able to, you know, hey, call into the debrief or whatever, and then turn off his phone for four days, go fishing, show back up at the track, you know, and win races. Yeah. And be fast and be, I mean, just a few weeks ago, not that long ago, he was, we we're talking about, oh, could he win the regular season title? So, um, you know, he was running second a week ago and could have, you know, things may play out differently there, could have won. Yeah. So yeah, it's, for it's sure. Not like his performance has fallen off a cliff at all. And, the numbers bear that out. I mean, in terms of uh, average finish this year, points, everything else, he's, you know, top five or six. I don't know where he fell after tonight's race, but he's certainly there. Interesting thing to note, too, and you, you kind of talked about it, is really incredibly well-respected. But a driver – I don't remember a driver with the length of Truex's career that didn't have any incidents, wasn't – didn't have, a, you know, a, a, an altercation – or a profile moment you're like what what is this guy doing or like you look at it even carl edwards had a couple moments you know remember he faked punch matt kenseth once and he and harvick got into a scuffle like there was never anything about truex in that thing like really wasn't somebody you who mean in terms of like yelling at a driver yelling at drivers or anything i mean he had the logano he may have won the Battle, yeah, but, but that that wasn't like and, he wasn't like a, con, a physical. No, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get like, that. and I don't remember a driver, even Matt Kent. I mean, well, we all know Matt Kent has had his, <laughs> but like, it's just 
he was just always just doing his thing and never uh, his temperament is amazing to me that he can go that long and not and not reach that boiling point and just even keel like you throw anything at him regardless and it's always the same you know just yeah so but because he hasn't won um he's plus 122 on the playoff cut line yes should be fine should be fine overall yep. right what where is he in points overall sixth fifth Fifth. Fifth. Okay. Fifth in points. Plus 122 on the color. And there's been 10 different winners now. Nine races to go. No chance of 16. Right? No. Uh, no chance of six new winners in the next nine races? No. Yeah, Busher, Ty Gibbs, Busher, Wallace, Logano. There's a road course. There's an Atlanta. I, I, no, no, say, Atlanta's I, in the class. I have Never learned. Mind. I will not say no, but I would say unlikely. Yeah. All right. So here's the playoff standings. So we're, we're starting to get down to it now. So the bubble is Truex plus 122, safe, mm-hmm. we think. Yeah, yeah. Chastain plus 71, safe. Mm-hmm. Ty Gibbs plus 70, safe. Yeah. He's in a Gibbs car. You know, we're not thinking he's going to have yeah. a total meltdown. Alex Bowman plus 66 in a Hendrick car, still running pretty respectably. Yeah, on like the upswing. Flying. Like, yeah. I mean, he's ran better as of late. I feel like he's. I'm a, not worried about him no, at all. No. Okay, so now here maybe it starts to get sticky. Chris Busher, as well as they've Oof. as they've run, he's only plus twenty seven. Are you worried about Chris Busher or no? I mean, yeah, <laughs> because that's that's not a lot of uh, of points, and twenty seven points can go away in a hurry. That's well, two new winners, two new winners. It's well, it's one new winner from below, from below. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's one new winner, and you have one bad race. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, you know, and so what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, it can go away, and that team has kind of been. I don't think snake bit is the right word, but they've been, they've had Darlington, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. not their fault. Uh, they, Kansas got away from, not their fault. It, you know, that was a great race. Um, they had the, the tire issue tonight where there seemed to be in a decent spot. It's like, they just have some things kind of working against them and you, yeah, I mean, I, it, I'm not, I'm not concerned. I think he's going to be fine, but it's certainly, he's you certainly pushers in. I think Bush. Is I fine. think he's in. I think he's in, but I think there's definitely worry that you know. Okay, so now on the cut line right now is Bubba Wallace plus six. Mm-hmm. How you feeling about Bubba Wallace making the playoffs? Uh, I'm concerned. This team yeah, is I'm not. Too. This team I don't is see the not, same stuff that I thought. This team is not running well right now. They're not having great races. Um, you look at the results last few weeks, it's, it's 11th at Charlotte, 21st at Gateway, 20th at Sonoma, 17th at Iowa. Um, they're okay at New Hampshire. Um, it's, you know, Nashville would seemingly be a good opportunity for them to, to have a good race and come back and Michigan and there's still Daytona, but yeah, like this team is just not, this team seems off right now. They just don't seem like they're on their best. So it's, it's definitely a concern. In addition to that, and, and I'm kind of jumping a little bit here, it's who's coming. And I look mm-hmm. at Logano, yeah. and it's six points. And Logano on that, and we forward They're running much, much better. Much better. This is a much different team. Um, they're on the upswing. Two Penske cars have won in the past three races. Logano's been in the mix a lot. Yeah, like I am. I think I'm Logano's co- in. I think he's going to sail in and make Hunter, it. The, the, I, I agree. Based on the momentum we're seeing from the Penske cars right now. Mm hmm. Um, they're running so much better. He's basically overcoming, yeah. you know, a, a, a rough start. A, you know, he was good at Sonoma, and he got caught up in a wreck, not of his own making. And yeah. I, I, I think this team is very much on the upswing. Yeah. So, so then we're we're looking at Kyle Busch here, uh, another one where he's, you know, he's probably gonna have a top ten. It seemed like. I mean, I don't know how the strategy would have played out and everything, but mm-hmm. you know, another day gone down down the toilet. Um, minus thirty one now. I mean, he's gonna have to win. He's and he wants to win anyway because he's got to extend his consecutive that's seasons the with the thing. win. That's the streak. Like, but, is that's the the question? Is the, yeah. does that streak does that streak continue? Um, I don't know. It, it's interesting. You go back to twenty twenty. Was it Texas third third to last race of the year is when he got it. it. Feels like it's gonna kind of be one of those situations where it's gonna come the fall. You're like, you know, where where is it gonna, that win gonna happen? I mean, is are we seventeen races in now? Yes. 17, 17 races. Yes. So next week is halfway of the full season. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're starting. Like, I don't see like a ton out of Kyle Busch to be like, oh, yeah, he's going to win. Oh, boy. But there was that, like you said, I mean, the year he won Texas late, that was down to the wire. Yeah, but and, I mean, 
as Austin Cindric showed a few weeks ago, things yeah, happen. Yeah, no, I'm not yeah, counting yeah, it out. It's yeah, Kyle it just, Busch, but it doesn't it, seem to be going well right now. I think this is the longest longest winless streak of his career, right? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. It's been over a year. Wow. And then Chase Briscoe, unfortunately, is just, you know, he, he was right there on the on the cut line pretty much a couple weeks ago, and now, um, you know, he has incident Sonoma and breaks, um, and then tonight they I asked him, you know, he was going to run, I think, 14th or something. Um, and I think he might have finished then 23rd, 28th. 28th. Oh, OK. So maybe. Yeah. So that he said, I said, why would you come down pit road late? He came down pit road under green with like four laps to go. Mm. And I was like, why? Why would you come down pit road? And he said, oh, they said we were we needed gas or something like hmm. they were going to be short. So he had to come down. So he they gave up like 13 spots. But he said anything that could have went wrong today did go wrong. Um, that said, it sounds like there could be some good news for Chase Briscoe. You reported in the uh, Martin Truex Jr. retirement story as part of your Bianchi bomb on The Athletic that the leading candidate to replace him in the number 19 car is Chase Briscoe. So if that comes to fruition, Jordan, what do you think about that move for JGR and for Briscoe? If I'm, if one of the reasons that Chase Briscoe was so appealing to JGR as they went through this process of trying to find a, a driver was, you know, th there are Toyota drivers in the pipeline, right? You go hold Corey Heim and you can go forward. But it's this is a situation this team is ready made. Like you, we, they want a driver who's experienced, who's got cup experience, who's proven himself at the cup level. Chase Briscoe has done that. And you, you would think that it's a turnkey situation where he can hop in there in that team and they can immediately have success. And there's every reason to that. That was one of the appeals for him. He's really young. He's still a young driver. Um, he has shown his worth to the cup side. He's got cup experience. This is his fourth year, I believe. Um, so next year will be year five. And that he's a good team guy. People speak really high of him behind the scenes. And so should seemingly fit well into that Joe Gibbs racing operation. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at the all the free agents out there right now, um, especially with what he had done, yeah. look, up until the SHR announcement when, you know, right, even a couple weeks before that, right, starting to go downhill a little bit, um, I think Briscoe had even said recently that, you know, one of, the, one of his guys came up to him in the team shop this week and was like, hey, this is my last week, you know, and it's like, you just don't know who they're going to be losing. And as they lose people, it's, they're going to be losing speed. It's it's going to be a lot. He's going to have to win. He's yeah. going to have to win it, it could. to make the playoffs. He but could. it's going to be but, tough. It's yeah. really tough. But they, SHR has been better. The, I mean, Josh Berry showed it tonight. They, they have been much better all year than we thought. And there's been times this year where Briscoe's results to me don't bear out how well he's ran. They've had some issues. This Tonight's a perfect example. Um, but they are – the depth of that team is very much going to be put to the test the longer in the year we go. But, you know, again, based on what we've seen from him so far, I think you go, well, that's a guy who could, yeah. again, step in, keep keep the momentum going, yeah. the, you, know, you know, keep this team together. James Small and the group, the, the remnants of Furniture Row, essentially, right, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Yep. So, yeah, I think that's that's the best move that you could – make and I think I think he will be a good fit there I think he's, I think he's a really good fit and you look at the drivers are out there and Josh Berry's a rookie so he's still gaining experience and needs to do that no Gregson this is only his second year in the cup series um Ryan Priest is his resume I don't know if that's what they're looking for they want a driver I, you know no offense to Ryan but that's they're looking for somebody who's won at the cup level and has a success and that, that is not Ryan um and then you look at some of their names out there and it's like it's tough. And now, could they have gone and pry? You know, could Joe Gibbs Racing gone and maybe pried somebody away from a different team? Yeah, maybe. But that's also probably going to cost you some money, and it's going to maybe hurt some feelings depending upon where that driver may be coming from. And you know, you don't necessarily want to do that. And you just look at the guys who are out there. Like Briscoe immediately jumps to easily number one on that list of guys. You're like, okay, I want him. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a coincidence and I just want to say this is my opinion on this um, is that as Briscoe became available that maybe the timeline of Truex and what he is going to do maybe kind of got pushed up a little bit and you did hear Kyle Busch this week in his media session get asked yeah, about um, happening you know could could you go back to to JGR no. um, and he said no nothing's out of the question 
Um, and, and I think he would, he even said, I don't know if it was the question that said Hendrick or he brought up Hendrick yeah, it's, and then, uh, let, yeah, can I just, it's, yeah. it's this wild ass rumor that's, uh, I, 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 I'm going to call it a rumor right now cause I have not heard anything substantial, like anything credible to, to support it all. So I'm just going to say it's a wild ass rumor that he's going to maybe end up at Hendrick. But so what he said was then that he was asked, but you'll be, you're going to be back at RCR next year. Right. He said, yes. And then I think it was Lee Spencer maybe asked, but you know, have they talked to you about, and he said, they know my situation. There's no talk clauses. So, you know, he's not allowed to have discussions with other teams. It sounds like based on his contract. So even if he wanted to go talk to JGR, be like, Hey, can you come rescue me here? Or Sierra's not going so well. Uh, it doesn't sound like that was going to be a possibility unless he was going to have to be a breach of his contract. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. The don't circumstances know. being what they are, like what's changed since he left there? They didn't have sponsorship form there, right? Yeah. They don't have sponsorship form now. Well, and then but people might be saying, well, wait a minute. They don't have sponsorship for Chase Briscoe, but yes, they do. Yeah. Maybe. Because, I mean, you would think that Mahindra may be interested in following Bingo. their boy, Chase Briscoe. Um, and they they seem to have a little cash. Yeah. And so, so the situation... And what you're paying Kyle Busch and what you're paying Chase Briscoe is probably their asking price is probably significantly different. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't seem like we're, you never say never. I think we've all realized that, but I would say that the likelihood that that happens in the near future is probably slim. Yeah. So, and to wrap up our uh, playoff bubble conversation here, um, the 20th in points now, surprising name. Todd Gilland. Great, Todd Gilland. Great 20th, year. He's moved up to 20th yeah. points. He's, Ten, he's 97 points out of a playoff spot. He is, and he's done a really good job. 10th a week ago at Sonoma. I think he finished 12th tonight. Um, done a really, really good job. And this is a team. Todd has done – Todd has made huge strides, like, on the racetrack. And he is – I'm going to be frank. His pit crew has let him down at times this year. Like, they've had – he's ran better than they have finished. And – they just haven't they are starting now to develop some consistency and now they're matching the finishes with the speed and so kudos to them and todd's in a great spot here we have seen what front row uh, has done over the last few years and the, the continued growth of that organization what michael mcdowell has done and they've had speed and you wonder like how oh, well they're losing michael mcdowell how's that going to work out like they've put a lot of faith in todd they look at him as the the future of that team and they believe in him and he's Paying all, he is rewarding them for that confidence because this is a guy that a year ago, by the way, didn't ha wasn't with it. I mean, they, they kicked him out of the car for a few races. Yeah, he, and, he, they were like, "No, nah, sorry, we're gonna the, we sold some of races to Zane Smith." But. There were some serious conversations. Let's not forget about is it Zane or do we keep do right? We, you no, know, it was like, oh, yeah, we had a choice to make. Here. Todd has done a really really good job and is getting better and better um, and showing. You know, it's not just super speedways like we saw earlier this year at Daytona and Atlanta. But it's a stent at Sonoma. It's coming here at at, uh, at, at Iowa and, and knocking out a really good finish. So kudos to him. And front row does seem like there there is life after Mc, Michael McDowell. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, um, is there anything else you want to talk about from this race or anything I mean, like this before we get to the good race uh, poll? What do you, what your notes say? I'm taking a look here really quick. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Sorry. No, I think we're. Yeah, all I the think things we seen, have yeah. covered everything. Yep. We're good. All right. Well, unfortunately for me, uh, I've now lost two straight in the good race poll. Big Joe Wall says back-to-back -back victories for Jordan. It is definitely anyone's game now. Um, so, yikes. I'm only up 10-8. Suddenly, my lead of four. Ugh. I'm saving myself for the playoffs. It's, doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's evaporating, seemingly. So, oh boy, you get to go first. Um, we obviously has no previous historical data on Iowa, so it's not like we can, you, you'd say, oh, pull up your spreadsheet. What did past Iowa races get? Oh, I can't believe you didn't, we weren't prepared. Why don't you have this prepared so you, I can look at the data? Well, there's nothing to look at. So you have to guess on your own. So. God, you're exhausting. Oh, this is why I get headaches. Um... God, is 80 high too high? 81? I'm going to say 80. 80. 80%. 84. 
Yeah, probably right. Yeah, I think it hits the eighties. I think it's mid eighties. Yeah, that's a good race. And, and I, you what's know, what's, uh, you what's know what? the reason for voting no? I I don't know. Like, what is the reason for voting no? Like, I, I guess you want more cautions or contacts. You know, short track. Oh. But that's not what this is. This is not a Trident. This is not a Bristol or Martinsville track. This is yeah. more of a Richmond in that sense. Your your eighty four is a good number. Um, I, I and I think one of the things that people are going to be voting for in this is that Iowa got its date. Like, people were so excited. This has been a track that drivers have been lobbying for for you know, pretty much someone since they first opened this place up and they're so excited and fans have been saying, Hey, Iowa at Iowa, why are you not adding Iowa? And they did. And then they got it delivered. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. actually I, yeah, like, oh, damn it. I picked up too low of a number. I'll tell you what else is going to play into the vote. And we didn't talk about this on the podcast yet, but I guarantee you this is going to affect people's vote because people really liked the NBC coverage. Oh yeah. I could see it on X. They really were positive about NBC here in the media center. You know, we didn't really get to exactly our, we, we timed it out at one point. The the NBC feed in the media center was like 26 seconds behind (laughs) or something. So we were watching the, you know, the live NASCAR TV track feed here. So you do, you could hear the commentators, but we, you know, you're paying half attention. We're trying to listen to radio chatter. I don't really feel like I watched the broadcast that much. I I heard bits and pieces, right? So I can't, I don't really know, but all I can say is from looking at the reaction from people, they were like, "Oh, NBC, we loved it, we loved it, great," you know. So I think the return there of NBC, people, I think will make it makes them even feel more positive about the race that they watched. So I think that the race will be even higher because of that. Is that fair? Yeah, it's probably fair, and I picked too low of a number. I hate this stupid poll. All right, well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, it's all good. Um, so is there anything else we didn't talk about? I mean, I've, I've got like it all there's something that, you know, no, New Hampshire next week. Um, it's gonna be interesting. We got some big names in the playoff bubble and we'll see. Yeah. New Hampshire next week, then Nashville yep. and then Chicago street race. Yeah. It's gonna be exciting. Very excited about that. Coming up on the athletic this week. Uh, I've got Christopher bell for the 12 questions. Um, a couple of weeks. Oh, I tell you what I did it really fun interview with Shane Van Gisbergen uh, this weekend. And um, that's going to come out Chicago week. I'm very excited about that. So um, yeah, we've got, we are keep churning out the content. Always got stuff, the man. There's news like, out so. there afoot. We'll be on top of that news. Oh, okay. There's definitely some news. Um, one thing that I would like to let everybody know is um, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the, um, Sam Mayer Superman celebration. Yeah, um, why? I just don't know. It's something about it seems kind of cringe to me. I don't know. It maybe it's that like aren't they all cringe though? Like for the no, most part, like no. Some of them are really cool. SVG punting the that's, rugby ball. Why that's is that, awesome. That's, sure. The like watermelon's that. cool. Well, then, but yeah, but then Ross like has like watermelon seeds all over his face. Like that's that's a signature. So I love that. That's great. Um, fine. the it's Superman fine. thing, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a, how is it different than Kyle Busch's bow or Carl Edwards is back? Everybody's got their own thing. Yeah. But the Superman, you're being like, yeah, look at me. Like, you just I'm, won a race. You should be happy. Yeah. But you want to, I mean, you're a young driver winning an Xfinity race against, you know, I don't know. It's like, be proud when you accomplish yeah, things you in life, when you accomplish, like, I'm Superman. It just seems it comes off as too much, like maybe weight or something. I don't know. Anyway, it got me thinking. Oh God. I know where you're going with this. What would our celebrations be? What would our personal celebrations be? you got to have a celebration as you're saying. And I really thought about it last night. We talked about this at the tweet up. I was very happy to tell people this at the tweet up today. It was my Great. question by you, by the way, last night. Oh, okay. Your a, question. You, you know, um, by the way, really fun tweet up today. I, you know, one thing about coming to Iowa, and we even talk about like the Iowa crowd sold out, all that stuff. But um, really, just a great atmosphere. And you know, I, I met people at the tweet up today who I've known, you know, talked to on tweet on Twitter for years. But they were like, "Hey, it's nice to finally meet you." And they say would say their name, and it'd be like, "Oh my gosh, wow!" But like, they don't come to other races. Yeah. There's a lot of great, um, it's so another reason why Iowa is a great, it, it really does. There was a ton of people from Minnesota today that came down. Oh, so many people from like South Dakota. Yeah. Like 100%. there was like 
a half dozen people at the tweet up would be like, oh, where are you guys from? Oh, I'm from South Dakota. Yeah. Like we, you know, this this is sort of getting toward the we, barren area of we, racing, you know? There was a, when I when the debate was going on about whether I had Iowa to the schedule all these years, like, oh, well, you got to race at Kansas and you got Chicago and it's like, do you need another Midwest race? And it's like, yeah, those are Midwest technically, but like this does appeal to a different region. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you pull from the Dakotas, you pull, there's a ton of people from Minnesota. Um, yeah, I, I, I really does do a good job of serving an untapped market. And that is hundred percent correct. Yeah. So anyway, we were talking about the tweet up and I was like, you know, you know, cause what would my celebration be? I don't really have like a signature thing. Um, you I, don't rants, raps. Oh, I'm not going to throw rap, in your hat rap after I win a race. Oh my God. You know, that'd be so great. Like you get out of the car and like you do this nat there's rap. Like off. Marty or Marty Snyder, Kim Coons like, Oh, you know, tell us about your day. Drop and I start like, like DJ, free, drop me a beat. <laughs> just freestyling <laughs> into the crowd. Oh my God. You know how popular you would be, but I can't, I can't do that. Well, figure it I'm out. Not Harry Mac. Figure you know? it out. Uh, if I was Harry Mac, that would be Who's sick. That? Oh, don't say that. I don't know who that is. All right. You don't just look him up on TikTok. Anyway, what would bring me the most joy and be the best celebration for me would be to take Jordan Bianchi's phone and not, I couldn't kick it into the stands. I'd probably hurt my foot, but I would chuck it into the stands and to see your face as your phone disappeared. Why? Because Why? that would be so hilarious. First of all, they'd get your DMS and all your texts. They'd be going through, they'd be, Ooh, what's this? Second of all, you'd be losing the idea of you. You are always attached to your phone. I've never seen you without your phone at all times to have the idea of you. Oh, my phone, my phone. You're attached How to your can I phone. Break the news. Well, I know, but it's fine. If I lose mine, it'd probably be a blessing. But anyway, that would just be awesome. It'd make me so, so happy. You, It'd be better than winning the trophy to throw your phone under the stands. Be like, souvenir, somebody catch. So you would want me to lose the phone that may, helps me do my job at a, a, a do my job effectively you'll get another one you have iCloud backup don't you oh wait Android I do think you don't back, have iCloud no it backs up on Google it's fine oh okay all right <laughs> it don't, that's so mean like so you'd rather hurt your teammates job performance you'd get a new phone by the end of the day how am I okay it is literally get down with a race at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night do you think the T-Mobile store is open just go in the morning it's not a big deal Plus, I just won a bunch of money by winning, so I'd buy. I, I you know what? I'll buy you a new phone. You have like a back. I have a bunch of backups in the truck. I mean, it's so mean. Yeah, I would just. It would just make me happy. Anyway, this is why we, people what, think you're a jerk. Well, that's you know. I don't. It's, I'm just saying. It's people. fine. It's you know. I've I've accepted that. Anyway, um, what would your celebration be, Jordan? You really want me to repeat what I said last night? You already said it. The tweet up. So I'm just, I'm just not trying okay. to put words in your mouth. So Alan Quickie back in the day. Um, God bless Alan Quickie. Uh, used to keep a comb in his car, and he would comb his hair before he got out and did national TV, which I completely respect. My hair gets really, really wild um, if it isn't, you know, perfectly coiffed. Like today, for example, it was super windy on the grid, and I, I had like four or five people walk up to me, and they're like, oh, my God, what's wrong with your hair? Like, I've never seen it this way before. So I would get out of the car, and I would immediately comb my hair in front of the camera and make, like, you know, and do the, you know, kind of thing. And... Uh, you know, just, you know, kind of that kind of thing. And then I would sit there and do my interview. And then I would like stop like, oh, hang on a second here. And then I would unzip the fire suit like halfway, like Tim Richmond style. And I'd be like, hey, excuse me. I got to give the people what they want. Well, I apologize to Sam Mayer for saying his was cringe because that is the ultimate cringe, everybody. Wow. Sorry, Sam. I, I really take that back. I, I, I don't mean that. It'd be very popular. Well, uh, I don't want to put, I don't want to spoil Bob's, but we also asked Bob at the tweet up. What would his, Oh, his, I didn't hear this. Oh, you didn't No. It was amazing. He said he'd like point. To oh, the yeah, lights. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, you know, you keep be like, pretend like you're blinded by the lights and all the people in the stands would be like, Oh, we can't see you, Bob. It's so no, what you got to do then is you got to get people in the stands, like all of a sudden their cell phones on, like their, their flashlights. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. 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 Like like, 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 yeah, exactly. Like, Here's the lights, yeah, Bob. Exactly. Oh, dude, that'd be sick. I see. Like a car, like, like the card stunt they had today, except everybody has their cell phone yeah, flashlights it's on. Exactly they're shining it. them at Bob as he's won the race. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I love that. It's good. Yeah. See, I mean, there's there's plenty of great. You don't think that's cringe, right? I think it's good. 
but you said all celebrations are cringe a minute ago. That's not bad. It's better. I, I, I think when you do something at anything at a high level and you accomplish something, you deserve to celebrate. And, you know, obviously in good taste, that kind of thing. You know what? It's like the Superman thing with the S and the M because it matches the initials. Like, it's cool, man. Let the, we, we, people criticize NASCAR drivers all the time. Oh, we want more personality. We want them to be themselves. We want them to speak their minds and have fun and be loose. Great. And then we get a driver who's showing, a young driver who's showing personality and doing all these things. And it's like, oh, oh, no, no, not that. That's, no, that's not, no, let's cut that up. It's like the Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson when he was in Xfinity. Like, he was having fun. He was speaking his mind. Like, he'd walk on the grid uh, before the race, and he had, like, the, the speaker and the music. And it's like, you know, like, let people have fun. Like, we can't. I, I we, liked that. I mean, that's I'm fine. But, like, so, like, we can't sit there and criticize drivers for not having personality. And then they try to show personality and All be right. themselves. Like, it just, like, seems like we're speaking on both sides of our mouth. Oh, don't. Of all people, don't you tell me I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth. You're the master of that. Oh, don't bring me. No. Mm -mm. No, I was about to somewhat agree with your point. Oh, don't do that to me. No, that's that's your specialty, sir. Right, I'm being glared at. I'm being glared at. It's after midnight. Uh, so it's probably time to head on out of here, everybody. I think I'm getting the silent treatment on the way back carpooling. So everybody, thanks as always <laughs> for listening. And we will talk to you next time on the teardown. See everybody.